All right, folks, welcome back. Today it's time to talk about the exciting world of soap, and specifically soap that we use inside of our wet tumblers. And I wanna compare three different types. So the first is just plain old dish soap with lemon shine. This is kind of the classic combination that you've probably already tried in your wet tumbler. Now, a lot of people claim certain brands or certain types of, especially the dish soap, are very important. And what a lot of people mention is that you wanna stay away from any, th any of them that say ultra. Well, I'll tell you what, go to your freaking store and look at the shelf and see if you can find any that don't say ultra anymore. They're just not around. I, I forget what these, the ultra types include. Yeah, I don't know, but the, the ultra ones are supposed to have something in there that's bad, but it works great for me. I long ago figured out my recipe and I'm happy with it, and this right here is what I use. So this is combination number one. Number two are the Frankfurt Arsenal brass cleaning packs. These are specifically designed for the for use with the Platinum Series Rotary Tumbler, right? So that is the Rotary Tumbler that I use. And it's just a pre-measured, single serving sort of thing. You fill up your tumbler, drop this in, and you're done. So pretty easy. And what they mention is that you can clean up to 500 pieces of brass with one packet. They don't give any other information about one packet per gallon or whatever. They just, I think it's all sized off of the Frankfurt Arsenal Rotary Tumbler and it's one packet per load of water, I guess. And the last stuff is brass juice, case wash. I just started hearing about this stuff recently and people are making all sorts of insane claims. So I decided to pick up some. So on their website, this is sold as a one liter bottle and the price is $20. So whenever I get it, this is the sort of stuff that kind of drives me crazy. This is not one liter. This is 948 milliliters. This is 32 fluid ounces. I don't know why they don't put 32 ounces on their website instead of one liter. It's a pretty dumb thing to complain about, but whenever you're paying 20 freaking dollars for a little bottle of, uh, of soap, and they're basically shorting you one serving size, you know, 52 milliliters is almost enough for an extra batch of brass. So I found that kind of annoying. The website says, no stainless steel media required. Des designed for use with sonic cleaner and rotary tumblers. Removes fouling, tarnish, and oxidation from brass cases. Cleans cases inside and out, including the primer pockets. And it's made in the USA. So what I basically wanna do is I'm gonna tumble a batch of brass with each of the, these three types and we're just gonna have a look. And since the brass juice claims that you don't need stainless steel media, we're gonna tumble with no media. So the Frankfurt Arsenal Rotary Tumbler holds just about a gallon and a half of water. So that's what I went with. That's what I normally do. Like pretty much no matter how much brass I'm putting in there, I always go ahead and fill it all the way up because over time I've figured out the amount of dish soap and lemon shine I need for, uh, for a full load. So I just go with that all the time. You know, I'm looking at about 20 cents worth of soap and lemon shine here per load. So I don't necessarily mind wasting a little bit. The, uh, the Frankfurt Arsenal packs, this pack of 24 was $22.99. I added it onto a, an order I was making at Midway and got free shipping. But you know, if you wanna add a couple bucks for, uh, for shipping or whatever, you know, you're looking 23 to 25, $27 maybe, something like that for 24 loads of brass. So we could call it, you know, a dollar. Yeah, let's call it a dollar per load. So like four times more expensive than plain dish soap and lemon shine. Brass juice, I already mentioned this bottle was 20 bucks and the shipping was $9.84. Now with this crap, you gotta do some math. They tell you it's one ounce of solution for 64 ounces of distilled water. That's the other thing. Like, yeah, it tells you to use distilled water. Sorry folks, I'm not using distilled freaking water to tumble brass. If my results suffer, then so be it. I'm just, I'm not buying water to tumble brass in. But for a one and a half gallon load, by my crazy math, that comes to three ounces, which is just about one third cup. Or actually it's just, it's 0.37 cups. So that's how I measured this stuff. I used a one third cup measuring cup. And by my math, that gives me 10.7 uses per container. We'll go ahead and call it 11. You get 11 loads for your $29.84 of soap. So for that, you're looking at $2.71 is what I had written down. Hopefully my math is right. So 25 cents or a quarter, a dollar, $2.71. So hopefully this is four times better than dish soap and this is 10 times better than dish soap. That's what I'm expecting. So the tumbling is complete and we're just gonna talk about the results. This was gonna be a much longer video, 
but the results are so boring that I'm going to try and shorten it as much as I can here. I used uh, tap water that was as hot as I could possibly get it. I used the amounts of soap that we already talked about. And what I did is I ran the tumbler 15 minutes at a time. So every 15 minutes, I stopped the tumbler and pulled out five pieces of brass, which for some reason, one time I only pulled out four. So yeah, I got one guy missing there, but you, you kind of get what I'm saying. So this reloading tray here, the first row did not get tumbled at all. The next row is 15 minutes, 30, 45, one hour, 115, one and a half, 145, two hours, and two hours, 15 minutes. So each type of soap got two hours and 15 minutes worth of tumbling. Can you see the brass getting progressively shinier as you go? Not that much. Listen, like after the first 15 or 30 minutes, didn't seem to be a whole lot going on. We're gonna have a look at the primer pockets here in just a second and inside the cases, but the results were not quite as dramatic as I was hoping, hoping for. All right, so here's a top-down view of all three batches. Each of these were about three and a half pounds of 223, once fired 223 brass, which ends up being about 250 pieces. And you'll see after two hours, 15 minutes, they all look pretty dang good to me. Can you spot which one's your favorite soap? Probably not. This is dish soap, this is brass juice, and this is the Frankfurt Arsenal stuff. Now I did mention that brass juice is made in the USA, so I should probably mention that the Frankfurt Arsenal also says it's made in the USA. Lemon Shine is made in the USA, and Paul Mollov doesn't mention. I assume it's probably made here as well. So everything's made in the USA today. So what I wanna start with is I wanna have an up close look at two pieces from each batch Final results, so two hours, 15 minutes of tumbling. I'm actually gonna move it over here to the left. I've got one of these little bore scopes. This first one here is our dish soap. You can see, not a terribly good job in the primer pockets. Let me try turning that light up just a little bit, see if that helps here. Nope, not really, hopefully this picture is good enough. So that's our dish soap. And moving over, this is the Frankfurt Arsenal. There's the first piece, and there's the second. So Frankfurt Arsenal didn't seem to do much difference. And the last one here is Brass Juice. So there are a couple pieces that, you know, some of it got chipped out. So that's, that's one of the Brass Juice pieces got a little bit of the gunk on the bottom out. The other one didn't. Here's the Frankfurt Arsenal. Yeah, maybe a couple chunks came off of that one, but the other one didn't. And then the ones with the dish soap, doesn't look like they did that much for attacking that crap in the primer pockets. So let me flip the pieces around and now we'll go inside of a case. This first one here is the dish soap. You can see kind of a speckled, a little bit of speckled crustiness in there. But overall, like this is actually Pretty decent, if you ask me, for no stainless steel media. A lot of people, a lot of people swear by just not even using media at all, just, just using soapy water. And I can certainly see why. Like this, this wasn't bad, wasn't bad at all. Here's the other piece with the dish soap. Pretty much looks the same. So let's move on to the Frankfurt Arsenal. Go down the bottom of that. Okay, this is the Frankfurt Arsenal soap. Same kind of speckliness on the sides. It might be just a touch better than standard dish soap, but like if it is, it's just, it's a tiny amount. Just the tiniest little amount, maybe. So here's the other piece of Frankfurt Arsenal. Same stuff, kind of the speckles down the side and then a little bit crusty at the bottom, but overall pretty clean. All right, last up is our brass juice. Is that a little bit less speckly? Yeah, so we still got a little bit of crud in the bottom, but I think maybe at least this one piece here, this probably is the best one we've seen so far, but still some crud in there, still, still the black spots along the sides. Let's look at the, the other piece of the brass juice and start at the bottom. Eh, what do you think? that better? Tell you what, let me jump back to one of the soap ones, one of the dish soap. All right, so there's dish soap. Yeah, definitely just a touch better, it looks like. 
So dish soap one, oh, dish soap two. Actually, yeah, dish soap two looked pretty dang good, didn't it? So it might just be, you know, small sample size here. We might have to look at more to get a really solid idea of which one did marginally better. But I guess that's what I'm getting at is it's all so dang close. I'm not freaking worried about it. And call me a tight wad, but this isn't 10 times better than dish soap. And the Frankfurt Arsenal isn't, what was it, four times better than dish soap. So either one of these products really needed to impress me to have any chance of me actually starting to use them. So that, that was the, the full tumble, right? That was, that was two hours, 15 minutes worth of tumbling. Let's look at the 15 minute brass. And let's switch to a different head stamp. So each time I stopped the tumbler and pulled out five pieces in 15 minute increments, I was careful to make sure that I got some Lake City. I've got some uh, uh, Federal 223 brass in this batch. I made sure to get at least one of each of the different types. So let's look at Federal 223 because these primer pockets came out better than any of the other, other head stamps. I think, you know, whatever compounds and stuff were used in these particular primers just didn't leave as much residue as the others. So first here is soap. You have standard dish soap, so that's Federal 223. You can see at only 15 minutes of tumbling, there's still a little bit of the blue primer sealant around the edge, but it's already kind of attacking the crud inside of the pocket. Here's another piece. Yep, even more pronounced, you can see the blue sealer and maybe the pocket's getting hit a little bit better. Unfortunately with the Frankfurt Arsenal, I only had one piece Look at that after 15 minutes. Looking pretty good, right? So, you know, small sample size, but maybe Frankfurt Arsenal was doing a little bit better than dish soap at 15 minutes. Here's brass juice. I think it's I think these are all pretty pretty much the same, right? Definitely attacking some of the of the crud in there. Definitely still has not totally dissolved the the old uh, primer sealer. Here's the last piece with the brass juice. Decent job of attacking the crud. Now let's stick with the 15 minute time frame. This time we've got two with dish soap, two with Frank for Arsenal, and only one with the brass juice. So these are the these are Lake City. Yep, Lake City 14. Yeah, these are Lake City 14 head stamps. And if you remember, like it didn't these didn't really do any good at attacking that primer crud at two hours 15 minutes. So here at here at 15 minutes, I don't think it's gonna be, any of them are gonna be doing anything. That's the two dish soap. There's a Frankfurt Arsenal, another Frankfurt Arsenal. And this one is the brass juice, and it does have a big chunk out of one piece of it. Just a little bit looks like there. Might be coincidence, but I don't know. Let's look inside. So here, we're gonna start with the brass juice. Now this is what I found interesting, just because I haven't tumbled that much without any stainless steel media. Like already at 15 minutes, these look pretty dang good inside. Just a little bit of crud. Looks a whole lot like they did at two hours, 15 minutes, right? So it's like, I would say 90 to 95% of the cleaning on this brass happened in the first 15 minutes. So leaving them in there an additional two hours was mainly a waste of time. Here's a piece of Frankfurt Arsenal going down to the bottom of that guy looking pretty similar. You know, more of that peppery looking, speckly fouling still hanging onto the sides of the cases. Definitely a bit worse than it was at the two hour, 15 minute mark, but not by all that much. And here's the inside of the dish soap. And is it a little bit worse, maybe? Maybe right there around the shoulder a little bit more like caked on looking stuff than we've seen with some of the others. Let's look at the last one with dish soap. And that one doesn't really seem to have it. So that, that may just be coincidence. And then there's the bottom of that one. So we're not going to do this all day here, folks. Hopefully you see where I'm coming from here. They all seem to do the same job. Like my biggest surprise was how well all of them did with only 15 minutes of tumbling. Like here are, the, here are the five pieces that we just looked into. Like that's pretty shiny brass, man. That is not too bad at all. 
So if you just want a, you know, a little bit of shine on them, don't really care about primer pocket crud, then 15 minute wet tumble is all you need, man. But I gotta admit, man, I'm kind of just disappointed in brass juice. I see people hyping it up over on Instagram and I just was expecting more, I guess. You know, the claims on their website are pretty bold. The price is just ridiculous and it made no discernible difference between my normal dish soap stuff. Now, somebody on one of our Twitch chats was mentioning that he uses his, his brass juice solution multiple times. I think he said he uses his three times. So that might be a thing, right? Like maybe it's, you can get multiple tumblings out of it. But I just kind of hate the, even the thought of trying to manage that and keeping dirty water around. And I mean, I guess it could just stay in the tumbler jug or trying to remember like, eh, how many times have I used this crap? Is it, does it need changed out? Now I am going to give it, you know, well, for, I'm going to use the whole jug, of course. Paid a lot for it, might as well use it up. But I'm definitely going to hold some back for use in my uh, in an ultrasonic cleaner. I finally broke down, we were talking about this on Twitch just last night, and I didn't realize there were some pretty affordable ultrasonic cleaners over on Amazon. So I, I ordered one of the cheap ultrasonic cleaners. I've never even had one before. So maybe this would be really good in that application where I think in those you do generally kind of fill them up and leave them until it gets the water gets crappy, right? And plus, you know, they heat the water or at least some of them do. The one I ordered is able to heat the water where, you know, when I'm wet tumbling, I like using scalding hot tap water. So if I'm trying to reuse solution multiple times, then, you know, I lose the advantages of hot water. So maybe, yeah, maybe this will show up in another video. We'll give it a shot in an ultrasonic and try it out against some different stuff. And, I, and I'll tell you what, tell me, what do you recommend for using in a sonic cleaner or ultrasonic cleaner or whatever the hell people call them? What's your favorite solution for those guys? Because I'll try them out and we'll see how they perform versus brass juice. And also in, you know, in the ultrasonic, I am willing to maybe go pick up a couple gallons of distilled water. Maybe that's a thing. I'm just, I'm not going to be freaking using distilled water to tumble brass. That just seems ridiculous to me. That's where I draw the line. Maybe it would have made a big difference here, but I, I just don't care. If that's what it takes, that's, I'm not willing to go that far. Now the, the Frankfurt Arsenal packs, they're still pretty darn expensive too, right? At about a buck a pouch. But if you're one of those guys who has just consistently struggled to get the right ratio with your dish soap and your lemma shine and that sort of stuff, maybe this is definitely worth trying. It took me a long time to decide how much soap and lemma shine I like to use, which I, I don't even think I've mentioned that earlier. And honestly, I, I think it's about, I just kind of squirted in and then dumped the lemma shine in my hand, but I use a bunch. I probably use two and a half, three tablespoons of dish soap and then about um, a nine millimeter, an empty nine millimeter case worth of lemma shine. That's approximately what works for me. But I think it just, it depends so much on the hardness of your water. Like if you've got a water softener in your house, you're gonna need a whole lot less dish soap than that. I would assume the lemma shine probably stays the same, but the dish soap, you're probably gonna need a whole lot less. I've got extremely hard water, so I end up using a ton more soap. But if you're still fighting that battle, trying to figure out what works, you know, the Frankfurt Arsenal's might be worth a shot. Now, I have drastically reduced the length of time I tumble these days. Like, man, I used to let, like the, the Frankfurt Arsenal rotary tumbler has got a three hour timer on the front. I used to crank it to three hours and just let it go. And a lot of times that's what it took to really get the primer pockets looking as shiny as I wanted and all that. You know, I go a little bit ridiculous on cleaning my brass, but I like clean brass. But the biggest game changer there was whenever I switched from the stainless steel pins over to the chips. Hopefully you've seen my video. I'll, I'll be sure to link it here down in the description, little card up here, thing at the end, whatever. I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to link it here. There's a company over on Facebook. It's not a company. It's just a dude and his wife selling these uh, stainless steel chips as tumbling media. It's pretty cheap and it works awesome. Like it works amazingly well. The biggest downside of it is it comes very dirty. It comes oily and gross. You need to like soak it in some simple green or something to just kind of degrease it first. And then the first few times you use it, it has some carbon steel mixed in with the stainless steel. So you get these little rusty spots in your, in your media. It eventually goes away after just a couple tumblings, but it's cheap and it's, it's small and it's abrasive, I think where it gets in and cleans primer pockets so fast. Like I rarely tumble over an hour anymore and it's generally less than that. I generally go 45 minutes to an hour and my brass looks amazing. It looks perfect. And that cured a lot of my problems that I was having with 
especially the lima shine. Like if you overdo the lima shine, it'll end up discoloring your brass. It kind of gives it a grayish look. Well, when it's in and out of the water in 45 minutes to an hour, that becomes a whole lot less important. So that Southern Shine Media crap was a, was a big game changer for me. And the other thing was getting one of the big Frankfurt Arsenal media separators. The big things with the big bin in there and the big crank handle that you crank it around. Oh, that makes separating media so much easier. If you're still using the little screen caps on the end of your Frankfurt Arsenal rotary tumbler, you gotta stop, man. Go get you one of the other, the big uh, separators. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. So I guess that's about enough for today. This video was kind of lame, but it needed to be made, I guess. I was hoping for drama and just didn't run into any. So that's it, folks. I'll see you guys next time. More drama next time, maybe. Hopefully.